Hi everybody, Alex Brandon here with a different kind of video. Now you might know me from music for games like Unreal and Deus Ex of Days Gone By and voiceover for games like Skyrim or just recently I've been helping a lot of people with the audio on the upcoming Wasteland 3 by In Exile. But over the last few years I've become increasingly interested in cigars in part because there's something of a tradition instituted by the great George Sanger, AKA the Fat Man. Look him up, he's done a lot. And uh, this happened at a music on computers conference called Project Barbecue. And the tradition was smoking cigars with game audio folk. I kind of took to it. But at some point after that, I was given an Opus X cigar to try. Now, these cigars are made by the company Arturo Fuente, who makes many others, but I also discovered that there's very little comprehensive information about the Opus X line. There's tidbits of info here and there and some YouTube videos, including one by a guy named Randy that has an insane collection, but nothing that covers where to get them and a few other important factors. They're considered rare, very sought after, and high in quality. And while they're not everyone's particular cup of tea, there is no doubt the company has established a boutique reputation among cigars. So I thought I'd give as brief an informational session as possible before showing you some of the even rarer Opus X Vitolas. That's the term used to identify a cigar's size and shape. And for a while I kind of considered narrating this in the voice of Orson Welles, who was seen quite often with a cigar in hand. Yeah, but don't need to do that. Opus X cigars were first distributed in 1995, and you can look up the history just about anywhere, starting with the Arturo Fuente webpage. But most Opus X brands and logos bear the name Fuente Fuente, or the initials FF. Now this acknowledges the father, Carlos Fuente Sr., and his son, Carlito Fuente. Hopefully I'm not completely murdering the pronunciation. Over the years, there have been a wide variety of Vitolas in the Opus X line, available direct from Fuente, but some exclusive and, well, direct, meaning that they go directly from Arturo Fuente to distributors. But some exclusive boxes and humidor sets are also produced in cooperation with Prometheus International, a company in California who started making lighters, well, Prometheus being a titan from Greek mythology who stole the secret of fire from the Olympian gods, and who now makes some incredibly exquisite humidors and limited releases. Now, in the main line, you have, in order of length from longest to shortest, the Perfection A, the Double Corona, Reserva de Chateau, Perfection No. 2, Perfection X, Petit Lancero, Fuente Fuente, Double Robusto, Perfection No. 4, Robusto, Perfection 77 Shark, Super Bellicoso, Perfection No. 5, Love Affair, Bellicoso Triple X, also known as the Power Ranger, Magnum O, and Pussycat. Now, that's a lot of sizes and shapes, and they become available only around October each year at limited retailers in limited amounts, with one exception, Lost City, which we'll come back to. At my local brick-and-mortar store, Pipe World, they have a limit of three, so this year I picked up two double Robustos and a double Corona. You may look online, but most retailers you will find will list Opus X products as sold out or backordered. And of course, the price varies. I pay around $20 a cigar at the cheapest from my local store to over $50 at the more exclusive sizes, which we'll get to in a minute. So how do you get them? Simply put, you need to call around. Tampa Sweethearts does stock some higher priced sets and individual rarer Opus X cigars and is run by Arturo Fuente Jr. and is the closest thing to an official store that you can find. Still, cigar manufacturers, while they can give away free samples, can't sell directly and must sell through authorized retailers. So finding one will be up to you. Usually, if you Google search enough and use the phone rather than just what's directly online, you can talk to somebody that can help. Now, the exclusive lines. The exclusive of the exclusive, if you will. Fuente has released many, many different variations of the Opus X. The Perfection A was requested by Sylvester Stallone and is now more or less considered part of the main line but there are many others. Let's list the Vitolas first. BBMF, standing for Big Bad Motherfucker, and is Perfecto-ish. LBMF, BFMF, LFMF, Lancero, Lost City, uh, Tiger Shark, Scorpio, and a few that I can actually show you. 
Around 2004, Fuente introduced the Opus 22, a gift set that included 22 coffin special Opus X cigars, unique to that set. 500 are produced each year. There's a couple videos showing this set on YouTube, and it's a very impressive set. Not to mention expensive. It's a Prometheus-produced set and also retails for a ridiculous amount of money. Still, people snatch them up, and part of the profits from each set goes to something called the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which helps to build schools, provide health care, and community development in the Dominican Republic. There's also the Opus 6, a smaller set, 1,250 of which are produced each year. I happen to have one, and here it is. Let's take a look at it. Hi everybody, this is Alexander Brandon with an unboxing of the May 2019 Opus 6 by Arturo Fuente. This is similar to the Opus 22 and they are created in conjunction with Prometheus for the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which does an awful lot of good in the Dominican Republic in a number of ways. Uh, heard things about building orphanages, but I think there's also health care and community impact, community outreach. I'm not sure of the uh, details beyond those things. I've done a quick look on the website, and it's, uh, well, it makes me feel good to have bought one of these, even with the price that I paid. Um, now, this is for uh, what I w we would consider, excuse me, uh, Opus X collectors. And it is within a somewhat reasonable price range compared to the Opus 22 and even higher priced humidors. But we're going to go through the box and I'm going to show you each one of these cigars and hopefully give you a little explanation because the more interested I became in the Opus series, the Opus X series, the more curious I became. So let's get some questions answered, hopefully for some of you that may be asking them. So we start with a sleeve. on the inside of which is the same outer facing Opus 6. Let's get this positioned right here. It's not about cigars, it's about people. And let me read this properly. Thank you for making a difference in the world, one child at a time. Release May 2019, Carlito Fuente. I'm, again, going to try not to murder pronunciation of these names. But I'm not going to butcher it either by saying Arturo Fuente. Arturo Fuente. Hopefully that's not terrible. Okay, we have an inner box. And there's another gentleman that uh, un unveils the 22 that you can find online that says this is a Flappy Dealy. That's, to me, that's the official name of that, Flappy Dealy. An inner box, and at this point the anticipation is tremendous. Yet another thing to open, Opus 6, Flappy Dealy number 2, with a beautiful brown suede outer cover. Now is the moment of truth. The final Flappy Dealy, and this is a Makassar. Sorry about the light reflection there. I'm an audio guy, that's my excuse. But this is Forbidden X. Now, uh, heaven and earth, I don't know where that term comes from yet. Uh, I'm sure that uh, when they had created this in conjunction with, I'm gonna try to get some of the light on that because it's gorgeous, this striped box here. 300 of these were made, 200 black, and then 250 with yellow and red, and I think blue as well. But let's open her up. Oh yeah, Forbidden Acts, we'll get to the meaning of that, but Heaven and Earth I'm still not sure about. So let's get this a little closer. Huh? To an Opus X fan, this is quite an exciting moment. On the inner uh, box, on the 22 you'll get a, a, a felt or a suede um, lining. In this one you have this printed Opus 6 logo with uh, heaven and earth as well. So, on to the cigars. We have here a angel share on the left, uh, Churchill size. Angel share comes from the, I believe, top of the plant as opposed to the middle of the tobacco plant, and it was intended to be a, an exclusive 
variant of the Opus X series. Here we have the darker colored uh, Rosado wrapper. Oh, I'm sorry, the normal is the Rosado. I'm not actually sure what the wrapper is on this one, but it is the Oscuro Oro. And you can see that it has a 2014 band on it. Angle it a little bit better again. Then to the right of that, right here, you have the Taurus the Bull, except it is on a black, let's take it out here. This has a black forbidden X band. Now, on another YouTuber that is a Fuente fan, says that the blends of Forbidden X and the regular Opus X are the same. I read someplace else that they're not, that the Forbidden X are aged, that the tobacco is the same, but that they're aged a bit, which would follow from the color of the wrapper here. You know, slightly different from the Angel Share to the Forbidden X, and even to, this, to these others here. Uh, so these two Forbidden X, uh, I'll get to this one in a second. Uh, they are, you know, they're slightly, you can tell that they're slightly darker. So supposedly they're aged a bit more in a Calvados barrel. Um, so that's an interesting little tidbit that I wasn't aware of. I always wondered, what's the difference between Forbidden X? Why call it Forbidden X? Why is it forbidden? Et cetera, et cetera. The Lost City uh, Opus X cigar has a forbidden band on it. Why is that? Is it aged in Calvados as well? I'm not sure about that, but supposedly these are. This is the Taurus the Bull variant. There is There are standard Taurus the Bull Vitolas, as you can see. Um, next is not technically Opus X, but just as Randy, uh, Ropus X is his YouTube name, and he has by far the most impressive Opus X collection on the internet, except with the possibility of Sylvester Stallone himself. Well, and uh, the Fuente family. Uh, so this is the Don Arturo with a little opus emblem on the back. Beautiful band. I've heard good things about it. Looking forward to smoking it. These will sit in the humidor for an unspecified amount of time, but I don't have to let them sit too long. Some serious Opus X fans let these things age for five years or more in their own humidors. I don't plan on letting them wait that long. As you can see, these 2014s and even the 2016 are at least three years old, so they have a certain amount of age on them. And from what Cigar Obsession Brian Glynn helped, uh, tells us, uh, they're already turned and fermented for a long period of time uh, and aged very carefully uh, while uh, after they've been picked in batches uh, and so that already they, once they have finished that fermentation process, the flavor profile and strength will mostly stay the same, except smooth out just a tad, a tad. I don't know if I'm that much of a serious cigar enthusiast to taste what a, the difference a tad is. Of course, could be totally wrong. And there might be people that say, hey, I age my stuff five to 10 years and it tastes amazing compared to when I get it. This is a... a Forbidden X Bellicoso 13. You can see the little clock face additional band there. Fuente is renowned for beautiful bands. They never put a foot wrong there. Now this is the King Power, the smallest of the set. With what appears to be, along with the Oscuro Oro, the most traditional looking Opus X band. Now, I don't know if King Power, that this is the one that's the most mysterious to me. Does King Power, along with the Bellicoso Triple X or Power Ranger, does that mean they have the strongest strength? This isn't exactly fitting perfectly, but whatever. I don't know. But that is my little mini review and informational session on this Opus 6 set. Uh, if you can, I highly recommend picking one up. Now that we've seen the Opus 6, we'll get to Lost City, what I consider the only readily available Opus X series. It was created because Andy Garcia was directing and starring in a movie, The Lost City, that tells the tale of a man involved in the turmoil of Cuban revolution and Fidel Castro's rise to power. The main character flees to New York, making Havana his lost city, hence the name. During filming, Garcia requested a crop of tobacco be grown off season. I can only guess off season means during summer or excuse me, warmer months in the Dominican Republic, as tobacco is typically harvested in the summer, and aged a minimum of one year, most likely longer, at Fuente. You can find Lost City readily available, though priced higher than the standard lines online year-round. 
I've yet to really find if I prefer the Lost City to the other Opus X types, but to me, they're all good. Well, that's about it for now. If you've got any questions, you can always leave something in the comments, and hopefully this has helped you out with understanding Opus X just a little bit more. Thanks for watching.